Hi, this is Joan Fullerton and I'm back with a few more tips on taking your art materials abroad. One of the most important things for me is having a notebook sketchbook. If I don't write it down and capture it, it's lost to me. So I have notes about my thoughts, ideas about new art, and I also then have a surface that is large enough, the paper may be heavy enough, that I could do a quick sketch or even a small painting of washes. On my paper, I can use felt tip pens. So this is a little Sharpie that I might just make a few notations of relationships and draw. My other all-time favorite is this Papermate flare pen. I buy them in large packs at the grocery store. These are wonderful because they are water soluble, which means that I can melt this line with a brush or my finger dipped in water. If you're sitting in a little sidewalk cafe, I suppose you could even use your napkin and a little bit of that cappuccino you're drinking. So now I've got a few lines on there. Notice how fun it is when you can just get them to melt and then have a few values in there, a few soft places. That's really fun to do. Another material that I will take is a few neutral oil pastels. And these are really inexpensive, but sometimes I put these in because they're waxy and they act as a resist. So if I um, let's first add one of these in. This is a Derwent Ink Tense pencil, and it actually is ink, and so it's very vivid. So if I draw a few lines with this in here and then melt these, that'll be really cool, especially because those oil pastel marks will be a resist. See how they don't really take that wash? So check out how you can manipulate just like three colors, a pen, you know, and already I'm finding it somewhat interesting. Okay, then you can use obviously just a regular pencil um, and I like a kneaded eraser so you can smear it a little bit. And another favorite of mine is a piece of vine charcoal. And vine charcoal, here's one that's out. Vine charcoal is wonderful, especially at the beginning when the sticks are long because you can make very lyrical, loose lines with them that aren't, uh, you know, contrived or, or too controlled. And then, because it's soft, it smears so well. You can just veil things with it. So let's put it on heavier. If I wanted to build up some darker values, I can do that. And then with that wonderful kneaded eraser, I can actually lift out some lights. So here I have fine charcoal, water-soluble pencils, the Inktense pencils, oil pastel, and felt tip pens. Pretty simple materials, but you could do your whole trip with just these and actually create some very interesting things. I will be taking some mixed media paints on my next trip, and I like to use golden fluid acrylics. That's because there's so much pigment in these. They're very strong and can be diluted. So it a little one ounce bottle like this will last me a very long time and they're relatively easy to pack I think. I found this container in the cupboard, this old yogurt container and I can put several of these in here like this. I think I can get, let's just see how many fit in there probably room for another one. Put these in here and because it, the container is the right height they can put the lid on it. I don't think that one actually fits. Put the lid on it. It's nice and tight and then when I get there I've actually got a palette here to mix and I've got my water container. 
already. So that's a very handy thing to put your paint in. Another one that I found, this is a, a nice sturdy box and I think you can see that it's really, really shallow here. And in fact, it's, um, let's see, no, this isn't gonna work for these, but these can lay down this way. But this box will be great because I can put tubes of paint in it as well. And these can just lay down. Here's a box that I have that is deep enough for these. And so I could line up easily a dozen different colors of paint in here. For traveling, I don't take that many colors. I don't need that many. I can mix my paint. And I, I want to go with as simple uh, an amount of materials as possible. Now, these little babies have a tendency to leak over a long trip. The best thing I have found is to take a little electrical tape and tape around the base of the top of those bottles. So let's see, where are the scissors? You can just take some of this tape and get it nice and tight. This tape is stretchy, so you can kind of stretch it around there and really secure it. You could even go two times around if you want to be extremely cautious. And then I would probably tape the top down to make sure it doesn't pop open and there was some paint coming out. So you could do, in fact, probably smarter to tape the top across first and then tape the base of these. My friend Mary Beth Shaw, who has a wonderful company called Stencil Girl, she uses this packaging plastic to wrap these bottles in. And so when you stretch it really tight, it grips itself. And so you can just move it around. You could cover the whole bottle if you want to, but I think I would just do the top. And then when you pull it, it grips. And then you have this wonderfully sealed up, contained bottle. So you could cover your bottles that way. The tubes, I haven't noticed that they really leak, but you, you could put something around the tops of them if you wanted to. So we can put um, paint in here. Now my heavy body paints can also be diluted to be watery and like the fluids, or you can put them on more heavily, more like with an impasto surface. And so if you are an oil painter who doesn't want to take your oils, you may want to work with these. Another wonderful option for that is using open paints. Golden has come up with this wonderful paint which is much slower drying. So it gives you more opportunity to mix your colors together. And the one downside about traveling with your oils is yes, you can take your tubes of oil paint, but you cannot take your solvents on the airplanes. So these would only need water. So that's an advantage to the open paint. I like to do mixed media art and so I will probably take with me some gel mediums. I could put those kinds of things in there. If you get a small um, container of those, they'll fit in here, I think. Yeah, pretty well. And um, so here's paint. Let's see what else we can fit in this little shallow box here. Just a few brushes. I don't use many. I usually have my big, big uh, kind of worn out one. I might have a nicer one. Put some pencils in here. I'll have my vine charcoal, crayons. Might put a few of those in for sure. At least one. Some pencils. Masking tape is good. This to tape up my bottles for the return trip. Or this if you use the plastic. Put this in here. Another thing that's important to me because I'm a messy painter is I take a little bottle of liquid gloves that helps me clean up my hands. So fit this in here. Um, here's some polymer gloss that I just might want to have. I'll stick that in there. 
Here's a spray bottle. I buy these empty travel bottles at Target or Walmart or the dollar store has them too. So you could just have your plain water in here and spray your paintings and get soft edges or get it to drip. The other option is to put paint in them. I put um, high flow paint. This is a golden product that replaces their airbrush paint and so it doesn't clog up the nozzle. However, for just a short time, you might get away with just putting fluid paint colors in them. And then they give you this little colored spritz that's sort of fun. So this could go in. I would also put the top on it. I don't know where it is in this moment, but I would find that and tape it, put it on there. And a pair of scissors in case I want to cut something, you never know. So look, I, I don't even have this box full and already I have plenty of materials really. I will also stick in to my travel box a rag. Oil painters especially need to have rags, but I often do as well. Here's a bottle of uh, alcohol, not my vodka but it's rubbing alcohol and this sometimes I will scrub out in my acrylic paintings either for effect or just to, re to remove the top layer to get to um, something that was beneath an area. So you put that in there. Now what is missing here, unless you end up having this in your suitcase which has a small palette on it, um, I don't worry too much about a palette because I have been known to use magazines or newspapers as a palette which is actually kind of cool because you can squeeze your paint out onto the local newspaper and you can mix your paints together on your palette here and um, here let's add, actually add a different color in here so you can just see that it does work as a palette. And then I could paint on my painting a little bit with this. And then perhaps this will end up, after I've got several colors on here and been messing around, this might end up looking kind of interesting. So already then, I've got collage material. This might get torn up and put into something. So plain old paper is just great for a palette. The other thing that I could use is the plastic bag that went around some paint. If I want to put my paint in this before I put it in the box or before I put it in here, this could actually even be a palette. Or a piece of wax paper is a good palette. A paper plate is a good palette. Uh, you can just make it up. I find that often my best ideas come from improvising. Another thing that's important for me, because I am a messy painter, is to have some sort of a, an apron. And this one, which is cool because it has my art on it, and uh, my friends in Pensacola made this for me. But the best thing about this one for travel is that this one is very lightweight. So it will not make my luggage extremely heavy and uh, it doesn't take up much space. My heavier canvas one would be a little more bulky. Now you might find just one of your older shirts is fine. For coverage so you don't ruin your better clothing. Also that rubbing alcohol that you put in here is good for getting accidental drips out of clothing. Okay so look at this nice shallow small box that will easily fit in the bottom of my suitcase and then if you watched my first video you know how compact that little thing of watercolor paper is. Hold on I think I can show that to you. Here it is. This was our handmade easel and 
portfolio for our watercolor paper. Here's a piece of gessoed paper. Close this up. So this isn't all that much larger than my box here. So here we go. Check this out. This can just go in my luggage. It doesn't take up much space and I can do all kinds of great art projects with this minimal amount of material. Hey, hope you have a good trip and that you've got your paints with you. See you next time.